Pechi Kucha 229 Turtles flat line and flat final line and flats uh, yeah so I'm working on the same image I was working on last week tightening up the line work uh, coloring it and full disclosure I have finished it but I'm going to spend a couple of weeks breaking down what I've gone through because the whole point of this was the process in depth so this is where we were last week um, <laughs> Uh, I'm drawing the turtles from the 90s so I can color them, so I can see how I can implement what Scott Harris has been teaching me on the Udemy course that I paid for a couple of years ago and have uh, slowly been making my way through. Uh, the first thing of doing the uh, secondary line, the high line quality stuff, was I wanted to do Leonardo's turtles using some kind of special ruler. Uh, I picked... Um, the wrong one at first. I was hoping I could just get the handle to be circular without actually having to figure out the angles and boy did I get that wrong. Uh, I ended up using a sym symmetrical ruler and just drawing the left hand side of this and then it kind of auto creates the right hand side. It's a strange way to work and when you're doing circles it's very easy to screw up. I haven't really defined the form but I th I'm kind of hoping to get away with it by coloring it. Uh, another special ruler I decided to use for Raphael's mouth was just to use a, a curved line ruler. Uh, and then just I've used that for most of the major lines of his, um, well, his mouth. Was to see if I could, it was, it was pretty straightforward. I'm always happy to get in and out when it comes to using vector tools because that's not usually how it works for me. Uh, when it came to the teeth, I didn't want to... Yeah, I googled it. The, the turtles mostly do have teeth, especially the 90s turtles from the, the cartoons and the films. So I, I just was like, well, I'll just draw teeth. I'll try not to worry too much about being accurate. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it just doesn't look out of place. Uh, with Leonardo, uh, I just wanted him to have kind of like a pleasant smile on his face because Raphael's in the front grimacing. Uh, but it's a little bit difficult to figure out how to show a turtle smiling when it just looks like the mouth is following the curve of the nose. I think it's fine, but I wouldn't call myself an expert on this. Uh, and uh, with Mikey, I was like, well, I've, I've decided he should be eating pizza, so now I actually have to draw a slice of pizza. First time for everything, right? Um, it's. I suppose I should be pleased that I'm finding time to be referencing uh, foodstuffs in my busy schedule of playing video games and trying to not die from COVID. Uh, um, and having Don in the background kind of walking past while maybe Raphael is taking a selfie and that's what this entire thing's about. Carrying a, a bunch of his stuff uh, that maybe isn't all his stuff. So don't lay the blame squarely on him for some of the suspicious stuff he's carrying. But I'm liking the idea of telling stories where I can in this image even though I'm supposed to be just about colouring it. Uh, so they're in the sewers because that's where they live and that means bricks on the walls and I've decided to use uh, the parallel line rulers to draw those bricks. I mean it's just rectangles, right? How hard could it be? I eyeballed it. I'm not too worried about them all being equidistant but what I found is like just the vector lines look rubbish so I ended up kind of having to draw over them because I forgot that when bricks are laid they're usually laid... Um, not directly on top of each other it's not a direct grid uh, every row is kind of offset from the one underneath so I, I thought I was going to get out of doing some extra work and ended up doing more so this is kind of where I am when it comes to the line work it's pretty tight it's not perfect but I should be able to color my way to a, a kind of a 3d image without worrying too much it's, it's way cleaner than say what I did with that little smiley show five minute video uh, so here is my shopping list of stuff I'm supposed to do following what Scott Harris has both basically told me. Um, and effectively, it's just an order of building up um, the colors so that I'm not tripping over myself and that I'm paying a, a lot of attention to the lighting. Uh, firstly, of course, I have to put in base colors. And um, the thing about coloring is I, I always kind of look down my nose on it because it's not that complicated but it takes so long to just lay in the basic colors and just the green for the turtles I feel like it took me at least an hour which is crazy but um, you know I've been advised to not use the paint bucket door and I, I kind of agree with that also I am aware that sometimes the turtles aren't all the same color but sometimes they are all exactly the same green uh, the 
old school turtles, the kind of the early 90s turtles, they are all the same green, and I'm like, well, that's fine with me, because I don't want to overcomplicate having to shade them all. Um, this is me just trying to, to take this somewhat easy. Um, I'm constantly using uh, a grey scale layer to check what the values look in comparison to each other. Obviously, the teeth are they're slightly off uh, complete bright white, but they're still much brighter than everything else. I've laid in the flats for the pizza. I've forgotten to do the um, the actual base of the pizza. I've coloured it in the same colour as the cheese. But to say I care about the pizza is is not true. Uh, I just don't want to have had put it in and then just make it this thing that catches the eye because it's clearly shit, right? So here I am just checking the, the grey values again. You can obviously see the white's very white. And you can determine that the turtles are different colours from their bandanas, but you can't actually determine the bandanas are different colours from each other because uh, I'm picking them all from the same kind of area of the colour pick at all. If you look at the bottom left hand, they're all kind of coming from that same tonal area where that little white square is. So when you remove the actual hue, they're all the same value. Uh, and yeah, I'm just kind of... Colouring in uh, the crocodile and the pizza box and the welcome mat in the background. Uh, just trying to make sure I've got all the base flats in so that I can actually figure out my lighting. Uh, so at this point, I've still got to figure out uh, the, the, the Predator poster, the Baywatch poster, the stuff that uh, Donatello's carrying. And I feel like the, because they're in the sewers, there needs to be this global lighting that accounts for the fact it's quite dingy where they live, but that comes next. So that brings us to the end of Petra Kitcher 229, and then next week is the actual lighting. It's the, it's the much faster stuff to do, uh, but it's the stuff that brings everything together, so I'll see you then.